All right, what's good, YouTube? It's Shin, and today I'm back at the Wynn Resort and Casino where we're heading to the buffet for their seafood spectacular dinner. Now, this is a dinner that's only available this summer, and I'm super excited to check it out and show it to you all, so let's head on inside. All right, everyone, so here we are seated at the Wynn Buffet Summer Seafood Spectacular. Now, this dinner buffet runs every single day of the summer from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. and runs $75. Is it worth it? I guess we'll find out. Let's go take a look at what they've got to eat on the line. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the buffet here. Starting with this salad section, we have a smoked salmon salad. And this is the watermelon and feta salad. Next to an Italian antipasto salad. And here is their quinoa salad. That brings us over here to their compose your own salad section. Plenty of uh, veggies here for you to make your salads with, along with ranch dressing as well as Italian. And this is the caviar bar. Assorted rows and caviars here. Very beautiful looking, nice colors. Here is the fresh fruit section. You've got bananas and watermelons. Looks like blueberries, strawberries, some pineapple back there, as well as some fruit salad and apples. Very nice. And then that brings us over here to some aqua frescas. Looks like a blueberry mango pineapple juice as well as water, uh, strawberry and lemon water. Here are your soups. We have a chicken noodle here. And that is next to some organic vegetable soup. We have a wild mushroom bisque here. And that's next to the creamy tomato bisque. Stunning. Let's go ahead and wrap you around to the charcuterie. Here you have your uh, meat spread. You've got some salami as well as uh, some prosciutto over here. Coppa and soppressa, very nice, along with some spreads. You've got your assorted bread here. And you have your assorted cheeses here. It smells very pungent in this section. Now here is some uh, codfish, along with some stuffed sole filet. Here's your tuna togarashi. And oysters Rockefeller. I mean, the seafood theme is definitely in full play here at the Wynn Summer Seafood Spectacular. That's next to your hot crab legs. And of course, your accompanying lemons, as well as your butter. Here is your pizza section. We have a truffle mushroom pizza your meat lover pizza over here. We've got some garlic knots alongside a caprese pizza, as well as your cheese pizza here. Very nice. That brings us into this Latin section. Got some uh, chicharrones over here. Looks like some zucchini and squash. That's next to some pork tamales. Chicken enchiladas with salsa verde. Now I tried these during the brunch, they're fantastic. Veracruz Pacific cod over here. Beautiful. We have a lamb stew. And that's next to some lobster peewee potatoes. You also have some accompanying limes and tortilla chips, as well as a salsa verde, as well as a salsa rojo. Pollo asado over here. Beautiful red color on that. We have carnitas, as well as some black bean charros beans, and a lotus street corn over here along with some duros. All right, let's keep it going. 
Now here is your Mongolian roasted crab and prawns, your seafood boil here. Absolutely beautiful. Some accompanying lemons. And here we have some mashed potatoes. We have some smoky pork belly mac and cheese over here. And that's next to a seafood risotto. Beautiful. We've got some barbecue pork ribs, as well as barbecue chicken. Some additional assorted breads and pretzel sticks over here. We have some fingerling potatoes with butter gleeks. A beef short rib over here. Some grilled asparagus. Let me wrap you all around. A Maryland crab spinach dip here. And four cheese broccoli over here. That brings you into a protein section. Has some additional duros. And then looks like a whole suckling pig in the back there. Let me see if I can give you all a good shot of the options here. We have pork belly. And that looks like some pineapple in the back. Braised pork butt or pork shoulder. You have some Kahlua pork belly here. And some manok chicken skewers down here. Along with some extra chicharrones. And what looks like some pate sauce down here. Very nice. Now that brings us into the carvery section. Obviously a very popular section here at the Wind Buffet. Hopefully I can get you all through this. Looks like we have some dry rub rotisserie chicken in the back there. And that's next to some blistered tomatoes. We have a banana barbecue chicken up top. And that's next to some roasted turkey breast. We also have some zucchini as well. Yeah, it looks very nice. We have some roasted kurabuta pork here. Let me see if I can come back for this one. It's kind of busy. So we'll come back to that pork, but here we have your accompanying sauces, a cranberry sauce, creamy horseradish, standard horseradish, some applesauce as well, a chimichurri sauce. All right, here we go. Leg of lamb in the back there, some kurabuta pork as well as the assorted grilled vegetables. Very, very nice. We have chicken pineapple sausage here. Some beef tri-tip in the back. And that's next to some of these grilled vegetables. We've got your beef steam ship here. A garlic infused prime rib. And plenty of grilled onions here as well. Looks fantastic. Now during the brunch service, this is where you would come for your omelets. Obviously not available for the dinner service. And then that brings us to the Asian section. We have honey walnut shrimp here. That looks nice. A seafood pad thai. Beautiful. And a Peking duck fried rice. We have a ramen station here. I believe during the standard dinners, this is pho, but it looks like they're doing ramen for the uh, Seafood Spectacular dinner. That brings us to the dim sum section. We have shrimp sumai back there. Some vegetable spring rolls up front. These are the vegetable pot stickers here. I believe these are the chicken pot stickers in the back. Very nice. We have some Thai chili chicken wings here. And I'm guessing that should mean these are the barbecue pork buns. Yes. Very nice. All right. Very busy today. Here we are at the sushi section. All of your assorted sushi sauces here. 
And then here we go, pickled vegetable roll next to your spicy tuna roll. California roll, as well as your hamasi, uh, hamachi sashimi. And we have a salmon roll here, as well as your paradise roll. Wasabi and ginger. And it looks like they have a couple of poke bowls here as well, although there's only one currently available. And that's next to your big soy sauce dispenser. Very nice. Continuing, we have edamame with uh, sesame oil. Here is your papaya salad. And then looks like a sushi section. They're setting up the boats. We have some, uh, what looks like tuna as well as some ebi sushi back there. You've got your seaweed, wakame salad, as well as your Korean kimchi. Very nice. And the seafood continues. We have a seafood medley next to some Dungeness crab, as well as marinated clams and mussels. And that's next to a remoulade sauce. Cocktail sauce, as well as your shrimp cocktail here. Some additional lemons for that freshness. And oh, oh, whoa, 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 they've got crab legs here. This is typically where the crab legs are, but they also have lobster claws. I see where that premium price is coming into play, especially if they're gonna add lobster claws back here. Very nice. Now that is the majority of this, that's the actual buffet rather. Let me take you over to the dessert section and let's take a look at the sweets. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the desserts. We have a chocolate fantasy cake. And that's next to some assorted cake pops. We have Hawaiian cake down here. And that's next to the salted caramel cupcake. And this is the red velvet cake. We have some assorted donuts as well as vegan donuts. And we have some bunt cakes down here. Some additional unlabeled cakes, all looking very chocolatey and delicious. And then you have that oh so famous ice cream wheel, serving up all sorts of gelatos and ice creams, looks really good. And let me bring you guys around to the toppings for that ice cream. You've got Skittles and chocolate chips, jelly beans and M&Ms. And then there's also another section of the desserts. Let me wrap you guys around. And see if we can catch some of this. Whoa, there's a lot going on over here. All right. Marble cake next to some no sugar added cheesecake. We have some assorted mousse cups. You've got chocolate vanilla, berries, key lime, and hazelnut. S'more cones next to some coconut guava tres leches cakes and a marshmallow kiss. Sounds really nice. Got a vegan chocolate cake here. Oh, let's see. And then we have some creme brulee here as well as some panna cottas. We have some petite desserts, tiramisu, lemon meringue tart, chocolate dome, and a pistachio cake. And that is next to some blueberry cheesecake. Got your made-to-order crepe station over here. Looks really nice. We've got some caramel churros. Well, some almond tarts up here. Next to some pecan tarts. And that's on top of the lava cakes. And then this is, oh, okay, usually this is the uh, bread pudding and the, uh, what is this called now? A lemon blueberry bucky and a campfire brownie bread pudding. Yeah, I mean, that looks really good. All right, folks, and that's the whole buffet. Let me go ahead and put this down and we'll get our first plate. I'll catch you in a little bit when I'm ready with that. All right, everyone, so I'm back with my first plate. And with my first plate, of course, we're gonna go in on as much seafood as possible. I had to go in on some lobster claws as well as some Dungeness crab legs. I also went in on some cold crab legs as well as the hot. I also got some of their codfish along with some shrimp nigiri and some shrimp cocktail. 
And also interesting is this Maryland crab dip. All of this is looking really good. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Alrighty, first up, let's go ahead and try the Maryland crab dip. And it's served with a nice crostini. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mm. Oh yeah, that's actually very tasty. The crostini is really crisp and it's Parmesan crusted, so you get a nice rich salty hit from that. The Maryland crab dip, while I can't say I taste a ton of crab flavor, it is very garlicky and very creamy. You know, and the spinach in here actually provides a nice flavor as well. Yeah, I'll say this is a very flavorful little appetizer here. All right, next up, let's go ahead and try the shrimp cocktail. Definitely a big fan of shrimp cocktail. And the shrimp here are looking nice and clean. Let's go ahead and dip it into some cocktail sauce and we give it a taste. Yep, that's a nice shrimp cocktail right there. Plump, succulent shrimp, a tasty cocktail sauce with a nice amount of kick, a very solid shrimp cocktail here at the Wind Buffet. Let's go ahead and continue the shrimp theme and we're gonna try the shrimp nigiri next. I mean, it looks like pretty good shrimp nigiri to me. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Yep, that's pretty good. The sushi rice actually has a great texture, which is kind of rare for buffet sushi. You get a tiny hint of vinegar in the rice, which is perfect. And the shrimp, just like the cocktail, is actually a very clean flavor. No real complaints on that shrimp nigiri. Alrighty, next up, let's go ahead and try the codfish. Not gonna lie, it looks a tad dry to me, but looks can be deceiving. Let's just go ahead and give it a taste. Definitely a mixed bag with that one. Unfortunately, the fish is quite dry. And being that it's currently 110 degrees out, I would definitely like some moisture in my food. A little bit of pepper and dill gives it some nice flavor. Maybe if I caught this dish right when it was coming onto the line, it would have been really good. But unfortunately, it's been victim to the buffet weight and it's just not that great right now. Alrighty, next up, let's go ahead and try some of that premium seafood, starting with the lobster claws. Nice little petite lobster claw here, and they're actually pre-sliced so that you can easily remove a section to get at that meat. That's a very nice touch from the wind. And I got a nice little extraction of the claw meat here. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Unfortunately, the lobster claws aren't that great. The meat is definitely tough, so you can tell they've been frozen for a while. I'm not gonna say they taste old, but they definitely don't taste fresh. The texture is definitely chewy, and the flavor of the lobster does definitely feel a little bit subdued. Let's go ahead and dip a little bit into that clarified butter. That always helps. And see what that tastes like. Now the richness of the butter definitely helps, but unfortunately when the base product is just not that great, even the world's best butter isn't going to be able to bring about that great of a redemption. You know, unfortunately that was kind of disappointing with the lobster claws, but let's go ahead and try the crab legs next. Now these are the chilled pre-cut snow crab legs. I'm definitely a fan when crab legs are cut for me, you know I'm a lazy eater, so as little work as I need to do to put the food in my mouth, the better. And I'm definitely pumped for this one, let's go ahead and give it a try. Yeah, that's actually very tasty. You definitely get the sweetness of the crab here. The meat here is actually very tender, which is a huge juxtaposition from those lobster claws. And overall, it's just a very enjoyable flavor. And of course, we've got to dip that into some butter as well. And we give that a taste. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very good. The crab was already tasting really great. And so when you add butter on top of it, it definitely elevates it and makes it so much more enjoyable. Love that one. Alrighty, last but certainly not least on this plate, my favorite, let's go in on some Dungeness crab legs. Typically for me, I find Dungeness crab legs much more sweet than snow crab legs. I was able to get a nice amount of that knuckle meat here. And let's go ahead and give that a try. Yep, I'm a fan. For me personally, I've always found Dungeness crab legs just a tad sweeter than snow crab legs, and that's the case for me still here at the Wynn. Really nice succulent crab meat there from the knuckle. Great sweetness as well. That was very, very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. All right, everyone, I'd say a pretty excellent first plate so far. Unfortunately for me, the biggest disappointment was actually those lobster claws. I was really hoping that they were gonna be a star item here at the Seafood Summer Spectacular. Unfortunately, they didn't really hit the mark for me. 
That said, all of the crab legs were fantastic, and I actually really ended up enjoying that Maryland crab dip. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this and we'll go for plate number two. I'll catch you in a little bit with that. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I'm back with my second plate. With my second plate, I'm continuing the theme of seafood. Let me show you what I got. I went in on their Mongolian seafood boil, along with some honey walnut shrimp. I also got their peewee lobster potatoes, along with the tuna togarashi. Now this is all looking really tasty. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, first up, let's start off with the honey walnut shrimp. This felt super crispy on my fork, and it's looking really good. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Oh yes, that is very good. Excellent crispy skin here, leading to a very nice exterior crunch. The shrimp inside, I can't say it exudes a ton of flavor, but you do get that nice plump bite in the center. This nice light creamy sauce on the exterior has such a perfect honey sweetness. And the slight nuttiness you get from the walnuts here balance out the entire bite. A very well executed honey walnut shrimp. Alrighty, next up, let's go ahead and try the tuna togarashi. Now, togarashi is a Japanese spice blend. I don't actually recall what's in it, but it is supposed to have a very slight amount of heat. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Mm. Wow, that's actually very tasty. The tuna fish is firm and has a really great texture. The togarashi spices here are actually very robust. Way spicier than I originally thought it was going to be but you do get some nuttiness from what I think is sesame, but certainly the predominating flavor is that nice chili powder. And then you get a little bit of sweetness from this soy-based glaze here. I actually really enjoyed this. That was a good tuna to togarashi. Alrighty, next up, let's go ahead and try the peewee lobster potatoes. I do have a nice little chunk of lobster on the top along with this potato. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Mm. Wow, that is actually very tasty. The potatoes have a fantastic texture. They've been boiled properly so that they're really soft in the center. I can actually taste the lobster here. It's been infused into this broth that also has a little bit of a creaminess to it. You also get a nice hit of freshness from both dill and cilantro in here. And there's also some cotija cheese present here that's providing a nice rich hit. It's actually very reminiscent of a clam chowder, but a little more soupy. And of course, you have to replace the clam for the lobster. I gotta tell y'all, I actually really like this dish. This is a good one. Alrighty, and last but certainly not least, I want to go in on this Mongolian seafood boil. Beautiful red hue to this. I am imagining a pretty good mix of herbs and spices here. Let's go in and give it a try. Oh yeah, that tastes fantastic. The shrimp was nice and succulent and very juicy, obviously being able to suck up a ton of those flavors. There's a very nice heat here, but it's much more of a savory spice than a raw heat. And what's nice is you kind of do get an ebb and flow of tasting the shrimp as well as the seasonings. It's a nice and complex flavor. I like that one. Now, most good seafood boils typically come with a bit of corn. Let's go ahead and try that next. Big fan of that one. The natural sweetness of the corn plays really well with the savory spice, creating for a very balanced flavor. Sweet heat is always a treat. I like that a lot. And of course, we have to see what the crab in this boil tastes like. I was able to extract a nice amount of that knuckle meat here. Let's give that a taste. Oh yes, that's very nice. The natural sweetness of the crab meat here works so well with that spicy broth. And it really has been able to soak up so many of those delicious flavors. I didn't actually know if the crab was gonna top the shrimp, but it 100% does. When I go back for this, I'm definitely loading up on the crab from that Mongolian seafood boil. All right, everyone, I'd say a pretty awesome third plate. I really enjoyed everything I tried on this round. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this and then we'll go for plate number three. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, and I'm back with my third round. And with my third round, I think we've done enough surf. Let's go ahead and hit the turf. Let me show you what I got. I got a slice of their prime rib today along with some barbecue chicken. I got a short rib plate along with one of their barbecue pork ribs and some smoky bacon mac and cheese. This is all looking so good. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All righty, first up, let's go ahead and start with my favorite prime rib. It's actually looking like a pretty juicy piece here. I'm excited for it. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Mm. 
yeah, that was actually a pretty solid prime rib. I wouldn't say the meat was ultra tender, but it wasn't tough by any means. It was so much juicier than expected, and that was really surprising for me and a huge welcome. I think the salt crust was a little heavy handed. It was a tad salty, the section that I ate. But I gotta tell you, I was actually very happy with that cut of prime rib. That was good. And we gotta get in on that uh, horseradish here. And you know we gotta give that a taste as well. Nice and spicy horseradish there, giving a really great kick. I'm actually super impressed. I really enjoyed the prime rib today. Alrighty, let's go and keep the beef theme going. And next up, we're gonna try the short rib. I mean, can you see how much this is glistening in the light? And it was super tender getting it onto the fork. I'm looking forward to this one. Let's give it a taste. You know, definitely some mixed feelings on that one. The short rib is so unbelievably fatty and tender and juicy that I was expecting a huge robust flavor. Unfortunately, outside of the texture and the juiciness, it's a tad bland. The levels of salt here are definitely lacking and it definitely needs to be amped up a little bit. You know, I gotta tell you, this is kind of a shame because the beef is so tender and so fatty and juicy. Well, you know, better luck tomorrow, I guess they say. Now the short rib does come with an accompanying hash brown. And it actually did still feel pretty crispy as I was cutting into it. Let's go and give it a taste. Oh my gosh, that hash brown is delicious. The exterior was so unbelievably crispy. It gave such a great bite. The potatoes in the center do have a nice soft texture to them, but they're not mushy at all. It is surprising considering how much oil is on this. But what's really amazing about these hash browns is that there's a bacon infusion here. You could 100% taste a bacon, whether it's in an oil or some essence of bacon that's been put into the crust of this potato. It's wildly good. I would actually just eat plates of this without the short rib. Alrighty, let's go to move it along and try the chicken next. This is their barbecue chicken. Now it does look relatively juicy to me and a nice color to the barbecue sauce here. Let's go and give it a taste. Yeah, that's a tasty barbecue chicken. The chicken meat is tender and juicy here. And the chicken's been well seasoned. You really get that nice flavor. And the barbecue sauce has had a chance to caramelize, which gives it that extra additional flavor. I don't really have a ton of complaints for this one. This is a solid barbecue chicken here. Alrighty, next up, it's time for some pork. Let's go ahead and try the barbecue pork rib. Nice meaty looking pork rib here. And if this is the same barbecue sauce from the chicken, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna enjoy this. Let's go and give it a taste. Oh yeah, I love that. Really tender and succulent pork meat here. It's been perfectly cooked, fat rendered, and there's no toughness at all. It is the same barbecue sauce from the chicken, which is giving a really great smoky flavor. And I gotta tell you, the char on these pork ribs are also providing a nice woody flavor as well. Huge fan of these pork ribs. Now the pork ribs do come with accompanying sweet potato fries. And these are pretty nice looking and I'm a huge fan of sweet potato fries. So let's go and give it a taste. Yes, that's very good. You certainly get the sweetness of the sweet potato here, and it does have a nice fry texture. Not as pillowy on the inside, but it does have a nice crispy exterior, and as an accompanying flavor to those smoky pork ribs, absolutely a beautiful balance there. I really enjoyed those. Alrighty, and the last thing to try on this third plate is gonna be the smoky bacon mac and cheese. I mean, I love bacon and I love mac and cheese. If you put the two together, it's gotta be good, right? Let's go and give it a taste. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. The bacon is nice and salty and also has a smoky element as well. The pasta has a nice chew to it. It's not super soft, which is really great that they've been able to hold up their texture. Unfortunately for me, I'd say the cheese sauce is a tad too mild. I really want there to be a little more sharpness to the cheese in that sauce. But maybe that's more of a preference for me and not an overall detraction. It's a pretty solid dish in general. All right, everyone, definitely enjoying my third serving here. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this and then I definitely think it's time for some dessert. I'm pretty full. So I'll see you in a little bit when I grab some sweets. All 
right, everyone, and I'm back with dessert. And I gotta tell you, I'm so stuffed that I just went ahead and got something simple today. Now, if you watch my brunch buffet video here at the Win, you know that I'm a huge fan of their vanilla mango custard. And they don't have this every time, so I'm so happy that they have it today. This is definitely my preferred dessert here at the Win Buffet. Now, I don't actually have to taste this to tell you it's amazing because I've had it so many times. But what's another one for science? Here we go. Oh, still the best for me. That creamy vanilla custard, along with that beautifully sweet tartness of the mango. It just creates such a beautiful dessert harmony here. I gotta tell you, I enjoy this mango vanilla custard so much, there's just no way I'd miss it if it's present here. All right, everyone, and that does it for my dinner here at the Wind Buffet Summer Seafood Spectacular. I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed my dinner today. I can't believe that the biggest disappointment is actually the lobster claws, which is what I was hoping was gonna be the star. That said, that Mongolian seafood boil is incredibly flavorful, and I really love those peewee lobster potatoes. The prime rib was totally on point today, and the barbecue pork rib was delicious as well. Now, if you're gonna make your way out to the Summer Seafood Spectacular here at the Wind Buffet, make sure that you come during the summer, as the name would imply, because it's only here for a couple of more months. Now, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I would love for more people to see it. And if you enjoy food content from here in Las Vegas, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of great stuff coming your way. And that's all for this one. Have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed Vegas with me, Shin. Bye.